Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back. So, next we take up as we said that dissipation and scalar transport of uh, uh, non reacting and reacting uh, uh, linearly reacting scalar. So, uh, we will show that uh, how this kind of moment uh, uh, this moment methods can be useful for uh, non reacting scalars and then we will show for a simplified scalar that uh, how this can fail ok. And then we will go into this uh, the simplified uh, modeling for the source terms and uh, with that that will close uh, this uh, this class or this module on turbulent combustion. Uh, in the next modules, we will take up more uh, advanced uh, modeling approaches for turbulent non premix flames and turbulent premix flames ok. So, um, here we take up this uh, dissipation of non reacting and linearly reacting scalars. So, as we have seen previously that uh, this term is also unclosed and this also is a major uh, major problem ok this turbulent transport term turbulent transport of the species which is essentially the similar to the Reynolds stress terms, but here it is in terms of the species uh, essentially this is the covariance of the velocity fluctuations and the species fluctuations and the forward average of that ok. Uh, so, uh, how we can uh, 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 introduce a model for this. So, uh, as you said that the that modeling for this uh, Now, it is a general practice in turbulent combustion to employ this gradient transport assumption ok. So, what is the gradient transport assumption? We will see that and but uh, you will see that that is uh, mainly useful for reactive non reactive scalars and we will see what are the problems that you face when you apply them for reactive scalars. So, the gradient transport assumption is that is that uh, this V prime J prime covariance is equal to minus d t times this one ok. So, it is similar to the Reynolds stress uh, uh, closure where we saw that this Reynolds stress was essentially the Reynolds stress tensor was essentially closed by the by this kinematic viscosity tur kinematic turbulent eddy viscosity uh, times the strain uh, the strain rate tensor the forward average strain rate tensor. Okay, so, similarly here instead of the kinematic viscosity we introduce this uh, turbulent diffusivity and it is uh, modeled in analogy to the uh, to the turbulent eddy viscosity ok. So, d t is the turbulent diffusivity and we define turbulent diffusivity is essentially nu t by the turbulent Schmidt number ok. Now, we want to show that that the gradient transport assumption may not be acceptable for reacting scalars uh, ok. And for that we need to essentially derive an equation for uh, this thing that is the uh, the variance of the 
uh, uh, of, this, uh, of this reactive scalar itself. And this once again you see is analogous, analogous to the turbulent kinetic energy. Okay. Now, turbulent kinetic energy is the variance of the, uh, is the essentially the, the variance of the velocity fluctuations u i. Uh, so, k uh, is essentially the, uh, if you remember u i, u i, um, this one. Okay. And uh, for uh, k tilde it was like u uh, i, u i uh, tilde this, this way. Okay, so uh, here it's essentially this. Uh, this uh, is essentially the xi i prime. So here we have this. Uh, this this k, uh, this thing is essentially xi i uh, times xi i. But here i is not in terms of uh, uh, the direction i is in terms of species. So this is essentially this this term. So it is analogous to this turbulent kinetic energy. Okay, so we need to have an equation for that also. But first uh, we have an equation uh, for this thing. That is, we have an equation for uh, transport. Or an evolution equation for for xi i prime, and that is given by is equal to 1 by rho so this is the species diffusivity term and this is the averaged contribution this is the turbulent transport term that we are discussing about plus the SI in the source term. Okay. So, SI is the source term fluctuation is essentially is equal to SI minus the forward averaged SI. Okay. Now, from this similar to the turbulent kinetic energy derivation, we can derive this equation for this uh, uh, the variance of uh, the Favre variance of uh, the Favre averaged variance of, uh, of uh, the reactive scalar and this one is given by Class is the temporal term, the convective term where the variance of xi i is transported by the mean velocity. Is equal to minus this divergence of the mean density. turbulent transport term. Once again you see this is the this is essentially the production you will see this is essentially similar to the production term okay, the production of the scalar fluctuation term just like similar to the production of the turbulent kinetic energy term. Scalar dissipation rate forward average scalar dissipation rate just like the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. And the scalar reactive scalar source term covariance. Okay. So, this we will say that this is T1, this is T2, this is T3, and this is T4 on the right hand side, 
and this is of course the left hand side is of course the transport of this uh, Xi prime uh, uh, square Fabry average that is the on the this this thing uh, uh, this uh, the Fabry uh, the variance of the um, of the reactive scalar fluctuations the the transport of that uh, which is the left hand side is of course that and on the right hand side we have different terms so uh, which which of course determines the local rate of change of this uh, fluctuations uh, the variance and the and the trans and the, and the convection by the mean flow Mm, uh, so, uh, that this left hand side tells that about the right hand side what does the different terms say. So, the right hand side terms say that T 1 is essentially the uh, those each of these can be modeled and has different meanings. So, we will not go into that, but I will just say the what the terms mean essentially this is the turbulent transport term mm, okay. and T 2 is essentially the production of scalar fluctuations actually you, you should derive all these uh, equations by yourself because then the physical significance will also be clear uh, and uh, these are not very hard to derive but of course in a due to limited time of the class we are just uh, showing you these equations but this can be derived it just needs some algebra convolutions and averaging and uh, commutation of this average in inside and outside the gradients derivatives but you have to be careful there's uh, there's put this uh, uh, derivation is prone to mistakes Okay, production of uh, uh, scalar fluctuations. The mean molecular transport term uh, can be neglected for simplicity, uh, and uh, but you see that the mean uh, molecular diffusivity term uh, still uh, appears uh, in this one, which is a scalar dissipation rate, and that is T3, and whereas T3 is given by just like the energy dissipation rate, scalar. This is scalar dissipation. So okay, before that, the just this, uh, this as I said that this uh, T two this is essentially the production of scalar fluctuations, and that is produced by once again the mean scalar gradients and the this uh, velocity scalar uh, covariance. Okay, so it behaves just like the mean, um, just like the mean turbulent kinetic energy production and dissipation. So the production term was the Reynolds test terms times the mean uh, strain at uh, d u i d a mean of uh, d of mean u i d x j. And here also it is exactly behaves in a similar manner. So, when there is a mean velocity gradient it produces and there is a presence of some uh, but non stress um, locally it produces the, uh, the turbulent kinetic energy. So, when here we have um, uh, this this uh, mean uh, scalar gradient uh, it produces this uh, fluctuations of these things and the variance of this uh, reactive scalar fluctuations. Okay. So, uh, it's, it behaves in a essentially a similar manner and T 3 is this uh, i i is essentially the, um, the Favre averaged scalar dissipation rate okay and that is given by This is the thing just you remember it was like 2 nu Sij Sij uh, fluctuation. So, here also it is like Sij is the velocity gradient uh, uh, du. So, just if you remember that uh, epsilon was nothing but uh, mean uh, the turbulent kinetic energy distribution rate was nothing but twice nu uh, Sij Sij where Sij is equal to dui dxj plus duj dxi. So, this is exactly analogous to that term. So, production happens to this uh, production happens to this term and dissipation happens to this term. So, it is essentially you see the analogies come out and then T 4 is essentially the, mm, the covariance of the reactive scalar with the chemical source term okay so that is what t4 is okay so now 
we will define, uh, we will see that how this uh, gradient transport assumption can be good for a non-reactive scalar, but it uh, can, can be problematic for the reactive scalar. Okay. So, now before that we need to introduce some this uh, we will introduce the corresponding integral time scale for the scalars and uh, in terms of this uh, uh, scalar variance and this uh, um, uh, and this uh, uh, scalar dissipation rate and that can be defined as this. Okay. Just like if you remember the integral time scale can be defined like this forward average turbulent kinetic energy uh, uh, divided by the forward average uh, dissipation rate and then this can be related by uh, tau is equal to c uh, xi by tau i whereas c xi is typically taken to be 2.0 in commercial softwares. And using this we can essentially model uh, we can say that using combining these two things uh, we can uh, write that mean k by mean dissipation rate is essentially equal to c j times and this means that okay so this way the scalar dissipation rate can be modeled okay so, this is the thing. Now, if you use that the concept that in this equation, if we say that this production is equal to dissipation, that if we equate this uh, T2 and T3, if we equate T2 and T3 by this thing that uh, uh, production is equal to dissipation and uh, then we can justify essentially the uh, what will show that uh, that the gradient transport assumption can be justified. Okay, how do we do that? We said that uh, if production is equal to dissipation then the production term is this thing. So, production is equal to dissipation and since d t the turbulent dissipation uh, the turbulent diffusivity can be written as this form you see by dimensionality this has got meter squares per second and this is meter 4 per second 4 and this is uh, this dissipation rate is essentially meter square per second cube and so it has got the same dimension. So, it is like meter square uh, per second. So, using that dimensionality we can write dt is equal to minus v double prime psi i double prime. Okay. So, the whole purpose of this thing is to show basically that this gradient transport assumption that we just introduced that is this uh, turbulent transport term v prime psi prime that is written as minus dt times uh, this uh, um, uh, minus dt times uh, this thing uh, uh, that uh, uh, this assumption is justified for a non-reactive scalar, but it causes some problems for a reactive scalar. So, that is the whole thing. So, we will see we are proceeding in that manner. So, what is the justification is that that uh, if we write it in this form um, we can uh, this this guy can be written as um, as essentially dt times this times xi i. Uh, can be written as proportional to j c j i k and j i i prime square and this guy is essentially proportional to v double prime j i i double prime and therefore, therefore, if we combine these two things we can write what we get is minus uh, v prime j i prime is proportional to z j i minus 1 d t i i tilde. So, you see that the gradient transport assumption is justified in this case. Why is it? What is the basic code assumption? The more basic code assumption is that the pro we have required production equal to dissipation. 
okay. That is this we have said that T 2 is equal to T 3 and that is why we can have this gradient transport assumption. But the problem is that we have totally neglected this term T 4 right which is the fluctuation which is the uh, covariance of reactive scalar with the chemical source term. Now, when you have reactions you cannot neglect these terms and that is why, but when you do not have reactions you see that this assumption um, or this, uh, um, this thing that is uh, the, the gradient transport assumption uh, holds uh, pretty well. Uh, it, and it actually can describe things uh, the, the scalar the mean scalar uh, 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 transport equation pretty well using the gradient transport assumption. But when you have uh, reactions then the just production equal to dissipation is not enough because you have other source terms which is like the covariance between the scalar fluctuation and the reactions. Okay. Uh, 